teachers. What was the worst thing a substitute teacher did while you were gone? I'm a little late to the party but here is goes. I had a grade 1 stroke 2 class last year and one student had diabetes. Let's call him Adam. So Adam had a cell phone that beeps when his blood sugar is too low high. It's connected to the monitor in his arm hip. The cell phone has no other uses. No apps. No data. Not connected to the school wifi. The substitute saw his phone on his desk and promptly took it away as per the no devices rule. During gym class an EA comes in to make sure everything is okay. And Adam is visibly ill. Ale sweating the whole works. Luckily the CA knows Adam's medical plan. Instantly asks the Adam for the phone and he explains that the substitute took it away in the morning. The EA then loses it on the substitute demanding the phone. The substitute calls in the principal to reprimand the EA. Then get reprimanded herself as obviously she did not read the student's safety plans. She was asked to leave and the principal taught the class the rest of the day. Adam was fine. Drank a couple juice boxes and had a granola bar. Mom picked him up shortly after. Back when I was a teacher, I had a sub decide my plans weren't good enough for her and went rogue. She decided to show my students videos of animals giving birth on YouTube. I taught English. Rearranged my room. Not in a move student A away from student B and put her by student C way. In a move the giant truck over to the opposite corner of the room. And completely change the layout of student desks. And rearrange a bookshelf way. Okay. This is the weirdest one like. The other ones are explainable as the subs being a-holes. But this. Just. Why. Left my perfectly prepped and neat desk an absolute disaster. Did not follow the lesson plan and. Took my gel pens. I had a sub steal my dry erase markers and emergency chocolate once. After that. I locked my drawers and left them with two pens and one dry erase marker. There was a harpsichord in the front of the classroom used both for demonstration and performance. Not knowing what he was doing. The sub tried to tune three notes that had gone mildly out of tune while I was away. He managed to break the strings on all three notes and left a message inside reading. Sorry about that. There was a secret harpsichord at my university. Not to everyone obviously. But most of the music majors didn't know it existed. I was teaching myself piano at the time and played the wheels off that bad boy after discovering it. If I could have strapped it to my car. I would have taken it home after spring semester. Now. I've heard there was a secret harpsichord. That that lonely scene test played. And it pleased the lord but you don't really care for music. Do you? A few of the periods I taught were co-teach classes where a percentage of the students in the class have special needs but can work well enough in a general population classroom with assistance from a special education co-instructor. These classes were often very rewarding to teach. But one downside of teaching that population from a logistical standpoint is that I was often required to attend ARD meetings. Basically every special education student has a meeting about twice a year, sometimes more frequently depending on need, where administrators, teachers, counselors, parents guardians, and the student themselves all get together to go over their status and review the various educational accommodations a student is receiving to determine what may or may not need to change to best suit their needs. I didn't have a problem with attending these meetings per se, but because they only take one period, and several teachers are rotating through various meetings over the course of a day, the school had devoted odd subs who were more akin to babysitters, at best, than substitute educators. That means that during that one period, hell can randomly break loose. One year I had a tough student who had some serious attitude problems, but was a good person underneath it all and with whom I'd done a lot of work with to improve her engagement and interest in my class. About halfway through the year, I got called for an art meeting during the period I had said student. In my absence of 45 minutes the sub decided to pick a petty argument with my kid who was rightfully offended but unwisely overreacted and escalated things to making threats and nearly coming to blows with the sub to where she ended up within school suspension for a while. Getting the story from all parties and witnesses involved later, it's pretty clear the sub was to blame, and the kid who I'd worked so hard with was back at square one. I eventually got her back on track, and she ended up with one of the highest grades in my class at the end of the year. But I could only imagine how much better she could have been without the setback and the amount of trust in adults she'd lost. This happened to my colleague. But I was the classroom next door. My colleague was showing Clash of the Titans at the end of the year after a unit on ancient Greece. 
There is mild nudity at the beginning and the end of the movie, but they were in the middle of the movie so there shouldn't have been an issue. He left the video paused at the right spot. We still had VCRs like 10 years ago when this happened, but the sub somehow managed to show both the nudity at the beginning and the end of the movie. The nudity scenes were hours apart and the class was only 40 minutes. Then, the sub wrote an email to the principal about how my colleague made him show nudity. That's phenomenal. I actually had a similar incident with a sub in the Clash of the Titans movie, though I was a student at time. Apparently our substitute didn't know that there would be nudity in the film. So when the topless woman breastfeeding popped up on screen, she sprinted to the front of the classroom to try and physically cover the TV with her body. Catholic school lol. She let the kids run wild and do whatever they wanted. First graders, I was out because my dad died. Thank god my team realized what happened and all pulled together and cleaned the room put it back together before I returned to work. I came back after being gone one day and my students told me the substitute teacher flipped over tables in her age and was escorted from the building by a cop. What actually happened is that the sub left the room to take a 20 minute phone call and the kids thought it would be funny to flip the tables over. The substitute then had to flip the tables right side up while yelling at the kids. Then. During lunch, my special ed, co-teacher came into my room to set up and caught the sub making out with a student. Turns out she was 18 to his 25 and the 20 minute phone call was to set up the lunch meeting. The principal then had him escorted from the building by the resource officer. This is why I say having a sub is more work than just coming into school my damn self. When I was a substitute, I got a lot of requested jobs because the substitute pool was poor. One such example given to me was a substitute who would just go to sleep. I barely believed it. Once I was teaching full time, I had a sub come in for a day. When I got back my students told me that he told them to leave him alone. Sat down. And went to sleep. I believed it then. When I was in high school there was this sub that would sleep. He would literally introduce himself. Pull out his hearing aid and knock out. There was also this substitute who wouldn't let us do any work. She would start class tell us what our teacher left us to do, but then before starting she would introduce herself. This included 40 minutes of talking about her entire life and showing us pictures of her cats, and she would chastise you for being disrespectful if you did anything but listen to her. My teacher came back the next day and was like why didn't any of my classes get anything done? When I was in high school, we had a regular in the pool of subs who would just sleep through every class. He was very popular with students. When I was in high school, had a sub do this, we all left early except for a few kids. One of the kids told us later that when the sub woke up he noticed all the kids that left, looked at the remaining kids and asked them why they hadn't left yet. Great times. Didn't do anything to the kids, per se, but told the kids that the reason I was out was because my mom was having breast cancer surgery. I teach K5 and I specifically didn't tell the kids because I didn't want them to worry, so... When I came back, I had a bunch of kids come up to me asking about my mom, which was so sweet, but not something the kids should have had to worry about. Not a teacher but the sub made the handicapped classmate who has muscle, joint and vision complications go grab his textbook from his homeroom. He's not completely helpless but when it comes to heavy things, he needs help. Classmate's homeroom was halfway across campus and the required book consists of five large text volumes because they're specifically made for his poor vision. He can't wear glasses either due to complications. I offered to help because I'm usually the one that goes and grabs it for him during normal class but the sub yelled at me saying he knows my kind and I'm just trying to get out of class. Sub told me he's not there to play games and for me to quit it before he sends me off to the principal's office. Needless to say the entire class was shocked. Classmate came back with another student from the homeroom requesting that next time the sub send someone else to grab the books because my classmate can't carry it by himself. When my usual teacher came back we requested the sub not return because of what he said to us and did to classmate. My teacher wrote an email to the principal about it and that was the end of that. Gave out snacks I bought with my own money that I kept for kids who stayed after to get tutoring. Threw out a broken electric pencil sharpener that kids broke in front of her. Which again. I bought with my own money and couldn't get replaced by the company because I had no product to send back. I still don't have a sharpener for my room. Let the kids go through my things in my cabinets and desk. 
lost a bunch of stuff that way. Hey 29 MiG 152, Amazon delivers all over the world, where can I send you a pencil sharpener? Not a teacher, but a student with a story nonetheless. Meet MRS, hostess, fake name of V. Every time my 8th grade history teacher was out, MRS, hostess would usually sub for him. Not sure why, because she subbed other classes too. But all the incidents of note happened when she subbed for history. 1. There happened to be a girl in the class who shared a name with an Irish folk song. Every time MRS, hostess took attendance. When she got to folk song girl, she sang the whole song. Every. Time. 2. The history teacher kept candy and snacks in his desk. Lollipops. That he'd hand out for correct answers or just because. Some leftover Halloween candy. And the Twinkie. The Twinkie was not an ordinary Twinkie. The Twinkie was an experiment in processed food. This Twinkie was still in its original individual packaging and looked normal at first glance. But was actually 3 years past expiration and rock solid. The history teacher demonstrated this by standing on the Twinkie during one of the first weeks of classes. Also to say, this is a thoroughly inedible Twinkie. So MRS, hostess subbed again. And we knew she discovered the lollipop stash because she was openly eating them during class. But it wasn't until the next day that our history teacher opened his desk drawer to find that the Twinkie was gone. This woman ate an expired, solid Twinkie as well as literally all the food candy in the teacher's desk. I was a teacher's assistant while in college. The teacher and I took a week long workshop and had a sub. The worst thing she did, not letting the kids go potty. It was in kindergarten and she said all the kids going to bathroom were interrupting the class. One girl wet herself. School policy was if kids under a certain age had an accident the nurse would give them a pull up. Basically a diaper. To wear. The substitute proceeded to make fun of the girl for wear a diaper. Calling her baby and such. The little girl ended facing repercussions at home too. It was devastating to hear about. If a kinda class is being interrupted by constant bathroom runs, I found it helpful to just take a bathroom break as an entire class. I take them all down there at once. They take turns while we're all lined up in the hallway. Then we all go back to class. I find that they are much more attentive and focused after doing that. Since potty training is such a recently mastered skill for kinders, it's often hard for them to recognize their bodies signaling that they need to go, until all of a sudden it's urgent. Not fair to penalize them for this, they are doing the best they can. One of my substitute teachers did that to me in second grade. Thankfully it was a Wednesday, which meant my dad was picking me up instead of me taking the bus, which meant he proceeded to ream that lady a new a hole. It was so humiliating. I was only 6. Maybe 7, don't remember how far into the year it was, but I had long been able to not piss my pants. My dad was very protective and did not take kindly to this sub making me sit for over an hour at the end of the day, begging to go to the bathroom, not even surprised, it's one of the simplest things to do. I learned when I worked in daycare, if a kid has to potty let them potty, if they have an accident don't shame. This lady literally did the opposite. Accused a student of stealing something that the aide had put away. This was a class that contained some pretty rough students including one suspended multiple times for fighting and some gang members. She decided to go after a sweet, petite girl that never caused trouble and was generally popular with her classmates. This set off the entire class which is when the sub went ballistic and started wildly throwing accusations and yelling at said students. Security eventually got called and took several students out. My first clue was when the sub got my cell number from the staff directory and went off for 20 plus minutes about how bad my students had been. This was followed up with an extremely long email and a two page written note on my desk plus a concerned note from the administrator about not having appropriate sub plans. She didn't follow them in the first place and decided to throw me under the bus. The next morning when I arrived at school. The students were waiting for me at the door. Once I got them calmed down enough to tell their side of the story, we had a discussion on how they could have handled the situation differently. I promised them never to get that sub again. On a related note, I had a good relationship with said rough children because I treated them with respect and fairness. They usually behaved for me. Asked a deaf kid to take off his hearing aids. Kids tried to tell her he needs to them but to her they look like headphones. 
She cried when was confronted by another teacher. When I was in 6th grade I fractured my wrist but it was my dominant hand so I had to poorly write with my right. Teacher forced me to write with my left while I had a cast. I couldn't even grasp the pencil. Cried a lot. Then a couple months go by and got my cast off. Sub told me to suck it up and write with my left hours after getting my cast off. I felt like jelly and intense pain. Teacher was fired at the end of 7th grade because of unnecessary complaints. My brother had a PE. Teacher who requested he run with a torn Achilles tendon. She was probably older than the Achilles the tendon was named after. Similar story from when I was 14. My performing arts teacher got shy at me for sitting out of dancing lessons when I injured my knee in pay class the week before. I had a brace on and crutches. She thought they were props, sure. My parents dropped $300 on medical equipment just so I didn't have to waltz. She also didn't believe my doctor's note because I have crappy, scratchy handwriting so she thought I wrote it. She dragged me to her office and was all like I'm gonna call your father and thinking she was calling my bluff. I'm in my 30s now and my knee still aches sometimes, but every time it does I smile remembering my dad ripping her a new one for interrupting him at work and wasting everyone's time when she could have verified I'd legit gotten hurt by talking to my pay teacher. Had a substitute teacher in my high school French class show a movie that was straight up softcore pornography but tried to explain that since it was in French it was artistic. It was equally frustrating because while I wanted to see boobs, I also couldn't stop reading the subtitles because I had to understand what they were saying. The teacher did not come back the next day. Update. I went through all the comments and looked at everyone who suggested what movie it might be and none of those movies were the one shown. This would have been in 2006 and the movie looked maybe late 90s or early 2000s. If I come across it, I will update this thread but for all I know it could have been a porno in French. Sir, do you plead guilty to indecent exposure? Not. I plead guilty to being artistic. Lost more than half of my textbooks that I purchased myself. As well as textbooks that were school property. Administration just shrugged at this. Until they found out the textbooks belonging to the school were around $120 each. Also lost all the book assignments of 4 classes I asked him to collect so I could correct those at home. Kinda sucked for the students who did put a lot of work on it and didn't have digital copies. Also didn't teach anything that I asked him to, because he didn't really like the subject matter. Also didn't bother grading. When I checked the grades he had given out, there was only one grade and everyone was given 8 stroke 10. Even students that didn't take my class. I would occasionally give out starbursts to my 4th graders, B8 all the pink ones. Not a teacher, but in the 4th grade. Our teacher had a baby and was gone for several weeks. The sub we had was an absolute witch. She had no patience for kids. She'd yell at us for stupid sh ask us questions and or give us homework that was way above our tiny 4th grade brain levels and then complain and call us stupid when literally none of the kids did well on the work. One girl decided to get smart with her one day and she walks over and slaps the girl. Hard across the face. Which of course sends the girl into a hysterical sobbing fit. And says that's what your whore of a mother should be doing more often. Being tiny. Adorable 4th graders. We were all too afraid to tell anyone. We had to deal with that for 3 weeks until the main teacher came back. Two things come to mind. Tell the black children they need to speak more clearly because people think black people are hard to understand. Just sit and play on the phone while class loses its mind. 